darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy out When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand in shame
hoping may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Hey, good morning. Neil here. So glad to be with you, Apex Church, 
online. Welcome family and friends. I am so looking forward to what God is going to do in our time together. This is the day he's made. We will rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. Hey, we would love to hear where you're watching from in the chat. Why don't you say hello? I'm sure you're seeing the names of friends there. We can be an encouragement to one another right now. And of course, uh, after the praise and worship, we will have communion. So that lets you get uh, your juice and your cracker and get ready for that. Well, I believe that this is going to be a good day. Psalm 107 says these words, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Been thinking about that this last few days. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's a declaration. That's intentionality. And I'm trusting that during our time of worship that that's what you're going to do. I'm going to encourage you to stand, to engage, not to be looking around the room, whether that's the kitchen, your living room, or even your bedroom, but engaging and making a decision that I am going to worship God right now. And my, my voice is going to declare, I am redeemed, I'm saved. I've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and I belong to the family of God. So let's purpose to do that, not only during our worship, but in communion, and then as we go into our talk, that we're going to push in and lean in and believe. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know, maybe the enemy is saying something to you right now. Maybe this week he's been telling you, you're no good. You're a failure. You're never going to make it. Hey, you're insufficient. You're not enough. And the truth of the matter is, we know we're not enough. But in God, through Christ Jesus, he is more than enough. So come on, rise. Let that voice rise up within you. Why don't you silence the voice of doubt and negativity and self-talk that tries to take you out of the game. And why don't you put up that volume, that inner voice, the Holy Spirit of the living God. The Bible says that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you. And here is your opportunity to declare His goodness. So would you join with me as we stand, sing together, declare the goodness of God. Come on, let's enjoy His presence. Arise, my soul, remember this, he took my sin and he buried it, and no longer I you live, now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I 
That was a powerful time of worship. Don't know about you, but I'm feeling better 
already. I love when we declare the goodness of God. I love when we can sing that just like those in the Old Testament and those in the New Testament, that we can declare our God is alive. And you know, we're, we're not trying to entertain ourselves. When, when we sing, it's not just singing a song. It actually is worship and praise and adoration to God. Well, this is Pentecost Sunday. What a great day in the Christian calendar. Just to be reminded that the Holy Spirit came to dwell upon this earth, but more importantly, to dwell within us, to work through us. Pentecost Sunday. And just in a few moments, we're going to speak into that subject, but we're going to pray right now. I'm going to come before the presence of God and into the presence of God, I should say. And I'm going to ask by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus that he is going to meet our prayer requests. Maybe you would like to get that into the chat right now. If there's something you would like us to pray about, we're going to come into agreement with you. And the hosts, of course, they will correspond and communicate back with you. But right now, let's come into agreement. I know that in our local church fellowship, there are many people that are sick. There are people that are facing unemployment. There are business owners that are just getting ready to reopen. And we're really going to ask that God is going to move into every one of these situations. So can we come into agreement? I believe that if two or three, come on, come together in agreement on anything, it shall be done. So my Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name. I declare that you're my king, you're my Lord, my, you're my savior. I love you, Jesus. And for every situation represented in our church and represented in the chat right now, Father God, there are people that are sick in their body. I'm thinking of Alan Ritchie right now. Would you touch him in the name of Jesus? I'm thinking of those requests that came into the office this week. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are able. Your word says you do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. And we ask that you would move on every individual. Father, I'm praying physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever people are dealing with, God, would you intervene right now. Father, I'm praying for those that are walking through valleys. Father, those that are struggling right now with anxiety, with pain, conflicted within spirit. Holy Spirit of the living God on this Pentecost Sunday, I pray that right into homes, most importantly, into the heart and spirit of individuals, that they would be aware that Father God, Lord Jesus, Spirit of the living God, that you are with us. I thank you for your promise that declares you never leave us and you never forsake us. Father, I'm also thinking of unspoken requests, things that are dear to heart, things that we can't articulate in a public setting, but Father, you know right now, people that are listening to my voice, but are challenged in situation, my God, would you move on their behalf? And Father, we're looking forward to some great praise reports of what you've done, what you're doing, transformation, suddenly moments, because God, you are moving. This we declare in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to go to communion right now, something that I love so much. I've just been so aware of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. Come on, get that in the chat. We serve a faithful God. And maybe you're facing a situation, I prayed into that, where, where you're wondering, where are you, God? Let me tell you something. He's right there. You're saying, God, you're, you're, where are you? You're, you're out of sync. Let me tell you, God is perfectly on time. Maybe not according to our schedule, but always in his schedule, which is right. And as we gather right now, we're remembering, of course, the fact that Jesus gave his life on the cross for us, that his body was broken and his blood was shed so that you and I could come into a relationship with Father God. What's that old song say? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And in Matthew 11, I'm going to read from verses 28 to 30. Listen to what Jesus said. This is the NIV version. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. How beautiful is that? 
For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love uh, how the message paraphrase what we read there regarding this scripture. Listen, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. Oh, I love that. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy on or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I love the fact that Jesus tells us to come before he ever says, go. Before the great commission to those early apostles, disciples, before he instructs us to go into all the world, the first thing he tells us to do is come to him. And he says, come if you're weary, come if you're tired. Listen, come if you're disappointed. Come if you don't know what the way forward is. Come if you're facing challenge right now. Come if you're on the mountaintop. Come if you're walking through the valley. Wherever you are, wherever you've been, whatever is happening in your world, this is what Jesus says, come. And that's what communion speaks about. It speaks, talks to us about the fact that God sent his son to invite us into a relationship with him. God the Father through his son is saying, come, come to me. You're weary, you're anxious, you're disappointed, you're downtrodden, you don't feel like you've got what it takes. Listen to what Jesus says. He doesn't say, go away. He invites you to come. And that's what I love about when we look at that bread and we look at that juice that signifies his blood that was shed. It's reminding me that Jesus still tells us to come. Oh, Pastor Neil, you don't know how I've messed up this week. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. And then he says, come. Oh, Pastor Neil, you don't know my struggles. Come to Jesus. Pastor Neil, you don't know my disappointments. Jesus has said, come. You're weary. You don't know how you're going to make it. He says, come and lean on me. And that is the beauty of relationship. You see, religion says do. Relationship says come. Religion says you better not mess it up. You better get it right every single time. Relationship says even if you mess up, there's still a way back. So right now, I want to encourage you, as we have communion together, I want to remind you that this is not something that we're doing just out of habit or something casual or something that we take lightly. But we are reminded in this moment, yes, we've already sang worship, but in this moment of communion, your heart and God's heart aligned and remembering the love that he has for you. So, hey, if you're a believer right now, why don't you take that bread or crack or whatever you're using at home and we take, and as we're instructed, we eat in remembrance. Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for a body that was broken. Thank you for a love that was demonstrated. Thank you that when you were on the cross, as that song says, we were on your mind. And I know that I am in a relationship with you because I have declared that you are my Savior. And now, Father, in this moment, I am reminded of love and of grace. And Father, through your Spirit, that as I come to you, that that unforced rhythms of life will be demonstrated in and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. So we take the bread. Give thanks, Jesus said. Give thanks with a grateful heart, recognizing that that's what he did. He took it, he broke it, he gave thanks, and he gave it. And now we also take the cup, signifying love for you and me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, amen. And amen. 
Well, here on this Pentecost Sunday, we have something exciting for you. I'm going to have a chat around the subject of the person of the Holy Spirit. I've invited dear, dear friend David Murray to be with us this morning. I really want you to listen in. This is going to be a good conversation. Talking about that third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we didn't want to bypass the importance of the Holy Spirit believer in your life, working in you, working through you, demonstrating the love of God, helping us to walk forward. We've just done an incredible study on friendology. And Jesus said, it's better if I go, because if I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the Bible says, a comforter, one that comes alongside. Hey, we've been talking about friendology we need the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. So I really want to encourage you, this is going to be a great conversation. I think there's so much that we're going to learn. So would you welcome dear friend David Murray as we come together to have this incredible conversation. I am so happy this morning to have good friend David Murray with us. Most of you know David. Uh, we are contemporaries in the things of God. We grew up together through Bible school. We taught at Bible school together. And uh, as young men, we'd go out preaching the Word of God. So David, so good to have That's you with us. Here. Thank you so much. And Pentecost Sunday, wow. what a great day yeah. to be together. Amen. Why? Special day. Uh, special day. Well, listen, I, I want to set up this conversation because that's what this is going to be. It's going to be a conversation around the person of the Holy Spirit. But I want to read just three scriptures, if I may, just to set this up. The first one is found in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, and we read these words. I am going, this is Jesus, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in this city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Acts 1 verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 2 verses 1 to 4, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Hey, I have been so blessed that as a, a young man, I grew up in a church that was very open to the expression of the person of the Holy Spirit. You would see ordinary people the Spirit of God working in and through them that would be used in the gifts of the Spirit. And, and I want to say this as clearly as I can. It wasn't something spooky. It wasn't something mystical. In fact, as a child, as a young man, it was something that was just so clear, so real, so powerful. It was a great environment that, that we grew up in, that I grew up in. And uh, that's why I think it's so important that as a Pentecostal church, listen, the Pentecostal Commission can only be carried out by the Pentecostal church operating in Pentecostal power. Amen. So we're going to have this great conversation around the person of the Holy Spirit. So once again, David, thank you for being with us. I know you love the person of the Holy oh, Spirit, yes. a yeah. subject that you've taught in a, when we were at Bible school, if I remember correctly, That's you right. would actually teach mm -hmm. on him. Yeah, the pneumatology, yes. Did that for many, many years. Uh, Precious subject, wonderful. Misunderstood by many people in the church, but uh, the scripture's quite clear, and uh, you look into it, you'll find out who he is. It's That's it. And, and I think so important, you know, you know the, the topic of the Holy Spirit is not something that we just roll out on Pentecost no. Sunday. <laughs> I think we can't miss the opportunity, but, but I, I was just thinking of the many conversations that we've had together, mm. you know, off a platform, not in a public setting, but just about the reality of whom he is. Yes. I, I wonder, could, could we just start on this, you know, that scripture where <coughs> Jesus said he's the promise of the Father? Yes. Because often people think the Holy Spirit, they immediately go to, to New Testament, to our Acts yeah. 2 scripture, where, where we will go. But the fact that, you know, in the Old Testament, 
the Holy Spirit oh, yes. was, mm -hmm. was there. And of course, I, I guess we've got to address the fact that, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yes. Can, can you help us understand that a little bit, please? Yes, it's, it's one of these uh, things that's hard to understand in, in our, our natural minds. But the Bible teaches us that God is one. Um, but we understand from the very beginning, even in creation, that God created and that the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. So the Spirit of God's mentioned right in Genesis 1. And we know that the Bible says that all things were made by Jesus. Uh, God made them, so God created uh, by, through the Son and by the Spirit. So they're all working together. And for, to be a Godhead, is which we say the triune God is a Godhead, they all have to be equal. So the Holy Spirit, if, if the Father is a person, Jesus is a person, the Holy Spirit has to be a person. And uh, he's the one that was there in creation at the very beginning. And he's the promise of the Father that the Father was going to bring and fill us with. And what, what a wonderful experience that is. Wonderful experience. And all through the Old Testament, we see the, see the Spirit of God working in co cooperation and coexisting, as you said, with, with, with the Father and with the Son. Because I, I, I've discovered, you know, talking to many Christians, you know, they are aware of the, the Spirit of God. Of course, it's Him that convicts us and leads us yeah. into salvation. But, but we tend to not think of the Holy Spirit working in the Old Testament, you know, and the New uh, and can you give us some examples? You already did, of course. Yes, and I mean, right through all the prophets, all the prophets, priests, and kings were all to be anointed, and th that anointing oil that came upon them is what we would class as a, a type of the Holy Spirit. It represented the, the presence of God. Uh, like King David, when Saul was troubled, King Saul was troubled, uh, or David, David before he became king, he would play on the instrument. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and that... Uh, it was the only thing that brought uh, peace to, to Saul. Uh, the anointing is the presence of the Lord, and David was, was anointed of the Lord. And uh, the prophets were all anointed and prophesied. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and I prophesied. And, they, and all right through every book, we can see the hand of God moving. And, and he is called the finger of God in some scriptures. Yeah. You know, he, God does it through his spirit. In fact, he, his spirit is upon the earth. The Father is in heaven. Jesus is now in heaven, but it's his spirit that's on the earth. And it's his spirit that's in us as we're born again of the Holy Spirit. So it's uh, Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, uh, but we have the spirit of God within us. And that's who he is. Great. And, and I think it's important that we, that we address the fact that he is a person, not an mm, it. Mm. Be, because once, once again, you, you know, uh, I, I've been just so aware, you know, that some Christians, you know, speak about, you know, oh, I'm not sure about it or, or that. Yes, but, but the Bible's very clear that he is a person person with a personality. Yeah, Jesus made it clear. He says, I will send the promise to the Father. He, he, a masculine pronoun. He made it quite clear. And it was it, it, he, when he has come, he, sh he shall teach you. Uh, you know, some people, some religions would believe that the Spirit of God is like electricity. Well, it can't speak electricity. It can, can kill you, but it can't, it, it can't, it's not a person. He shall teach you. It's masculine pronoun, and he's got intelligence. Uh, he can be vexed or grieved, the Bible says. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. which means don't put out the Spirit's fire. Uh, and uh, a very real person, he's, uh, he shall teach you all things, he, he will reveal things to you, he will reve reveal more of Christ to us, he's the one that shows us more of Jesus. So he's our teacher, he's our counselor, he's our helper. We'll find the word is paraclete, which can be translated helper. Some translations say comforter, mm -hmm. which he is. Some say you know, he's a helper uh, and a counselor, but he's all these things and more. Um, I, I was just thinking, David, uh, as you know, we've just done a, a preaching series on friendology, yes. the, the, the study of friends, the importance Wonderful. of friendship. And uh, I, I mentioned this just in the introduction to the service that, hey, if you really want a true friend, yeah. you need to cultivate that relationship with the Holy Spirit because yeah. he is a counselor. The Bible says he'll guide you into all truth. He's referred to as the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. Yeah. Uh, the Bible refers in the New Testament, you know, <coughs> that, that as children of God, we should be led by the Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. And as much as we cultivate friendship, uh, you, you know, naturally, I think spiritually it's most important that we cultivate this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and you, you mentioned there that, 
you know, I think, is it the book of Ephesians that says we don't vex or grieve the Holy Spirit, yes. if I remember correctly. What, what does that mean, grieve the Holy Spirit? Can, can you help us just yeah. a little bit on that, please? I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but have you ever been in a conversation and then you say something, you think, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. And inside, you feel like a check in here, you go, oh. Or even if you're preaching and you go down a line, you go, oh, no, I shouldn't be saying that. This is not the way. It's that... That grieving the Holy Spirit, for as far as uh, us personally being aware of it, something's like a check in your heart saying, no. And, and I've seen in services over the years, maybe you sense God is moving upon the meeting, things are happening, and then somebody will burst into song or say something, and you just, oh, it just doesn't feel, and the, th- the, the, the atmosphere changes, and, uh, and that can often be the, the Spirit of God being grieved in a sense of, he, he's a gentleman, he's moving, he's touching hearts, and he's Lord. And if I come in and st- try and take over, or do something, and God's Spirit is moving, it can grieve yeah. the Holy Spirit. So the, the, that's, that's the way, or if you say something, you can, you can grieve the Holy Spirit in other ways by, by saying something's not of God when it is of God. When the Bible says, like tongues, if you say it's of the devil when it's not, that can grieve the Holy Spirit. But the, the, the term grieve can also mean put out the Spirit's fire. And I think that's in our own life, the, the fire, the fervency, the moving of God in our heart. If, for example, we grieve the Holy Spirit if we don't forgive a brother, if we don't show love, yeah. that grieves. And that withholds the, the blessing of the Lord flowing through our lives. God still blesses us, but it doesn't take us to that place of increase. The same way that Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Yeah. And the same way with the Holy Spirit. And I remember your dad telling us of a, a time when they traveled as a family that the Spirit of God was moving upon the family in the platform and they were aware of it. But the meeting, there was no breakthrough at all. And they just felt the love of Christ and began to hug one another and something broke in the meeting. And the reason there was no breakthrough in that meeting before was because there was people holding a grudge. One side of the yeah. church held a grudge against another side. And the Spirit of God came and brought conviction, and then they embraced one another and, and received forgiveness. Then the Spirit of God moved. And often we, we want to see God bring revival, move in our hearts, our lives. But if we don't put the little things right, we don't see, the, you know, Jesus says, take up your cross. Yeah. What are you doing a cross? You die in it. And who wants to? The flesh doesn't, but that's what we're told to do. When we lay down our lives and say, Lord, have your way, that opens the gateway for the, the, the moving of the Spirit of God in a service of we just come and just allow him to have his way, that God can come in like that mighty rushing wind and change our hearts and lives because we desperately need him. We can't live this Christian walk without him. And, and the fact that we can grieve the Holy Spirit once again helps us to understand he is not an it. It you yes. know, I, we can't grieve this chair. That's right, yeah. You know, I, I I can kick this chair. I can say this chair is ugly. I can say whatever <laughs> I want. It's not going to make one bit of difference to this chair. But the Holy Spirit, we can grieve, as you've said, in, in yeah. so many different ways. And I think that's important. You know, as as we mature in the things of God, as we our desire is to please God. You know, if, if our desire is to please God, then it's important that we do allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into this area. Like you say, if we have unforgiveness, yeah. if if there are areas of our life that are compromised or not pleasing to God, it's the Spirit of God that convicts us of these things. I also find as well. I remember years ago. There was a, a man in a church, and uh, we were talking about being filled with the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, and I said to him, are you seeking the baptism in the Holy Spirit? He said, yeah. I said, how long? Ten years, he says. I said, well, he says, you can be baptized now. God can fill you with his Spirit. And he says, you want us to pray? I said, do you believe you'll be filled? He went, no. I said, well, there's no point in us praying. And often people come to church, and they don't receive because, one, they don't ask, and they don't believe. You've got to come, if you believe, you've got, first got to believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We, we lay the foundation out right. You know, in the scripture it says they were all of one mind and unity. Uh-huh. See, these are, the, these are the things. Get the foundation right and then it opens the way for the Spirit of God to move. And often we're saying, oh God, come and do this, come and do that. He says, well, you get that right first. You get that right first. Love it. And, and it's not in condemnation. It's not God, oh, I'm in fear. Even grieving the Holy Spirit. We can all do that. It's just says, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me. I, I, you know. He knows our frame. 
that were dust. That was like Elijah. He knows our frame. He knows his, my, Elijah was a man of like passions, yet he moved incredibly in the power of the fire of God fell. So it's not a matter of walking in fear and condemnation, but trusting God at his word. He wants to move powerfully. We just got to make sure we make, like for an airplane to take off, the runway's got to be clear. Uh -huh. And if God's want to come in and move, he's here, but if he want to come in in power, we just got to make sure everything's clear and the, the light's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let, let's go there then. Let, let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let, let's speak about the power. We've looked at the promise, you know, that he's a person with a personality. Let, let's look at the, this power because that, that's what Jesus said. You shall yeah. receive power yeah. when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Acts 2, 120 are in the upper room. And he was seen of over 500. Yes. Why was there only 120? That's yeah. a question that we don't really know the answer yeah, to. Yeah. Fearful <laughs> and afraid, yeah. you, you know, and yet there were 120 that were obedient yeah. uh, to, to the voice of God. And, and that is so intriguing, you saying that, you know, the, he's seen of above 500 the resurrected Christ. Yes. So they've seen the resurrected Christ, and yet they don't respond to that. Hey, wait uh, in Jerusalem. Yeah, and I don't want to be one of those 500. I want to be one of the 120. That's, uh, I pray I love that, David. That, that, that's our desire and everyone's desire today that, that, that they be one of the 120, not one that heard and, oh, I'm too busy, or I don't know if I want that. The master calls, he says, tarry in Jerusalem. And the interesting thing there, there's a, big, a lot of significance with the day of Pentecost with the dedication of Solomon's temple. In Solomon's temple, there was 120 priests, all sanctified, uh -huh. dedicated, and waiting in order. They were of one mind, and, and that's when, when Solomon's temple was dedicated, the glory, the, what they call the Shekinah glory, a cloud of glory came in, and it says the priests couldn't stand uh -huh. by reason of the, the cloud. Incredible. And the, the pictures of the old and the new, it's no coincidence how, how God did it, but there was unity, there was, there was separation. There was sanctification to that place where their hearts were just open to the Lord. He says, wait. And they did what they were, they were obedient. There has to be obedience to, to, be to obedient. the Lord. Let, let, let's discuss this then, David. Uh, because in Acts 2, 120, they're in the upper room. The Spirit of God falls upon mm. them. Uh, they begin to speak in new tongues. The crowd gather. They think they're drunk. Yeah. Peter now gets out and preaches an incredible sermon. We read through the book of Acts, we see that unsure men became sure of themselves yeah. because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We also know the scripture tells us that no one can say that Jesus is Lord, but the Holy Spirit yeah. works in them and through them. Let's address this. There's the, what we call the baptism of the Holy yes. Spirit. Yeah. Because I think this is where a lot of people, I don't want to say mix it up, but maybe slightly confused. Yeah. Let, let's address that. Yes, I mean, John baptized with water, and we know that it went down it into the water and come up out of the water. So it was submerged. submerged. It, wasn't just, it wasn't just a sprinkle. And the same word was used for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So it was a submerging and overflowing. And if you fill something up, it will eventually, if you keep filling, it will overflow. And that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is like. It's, yes, we've received the deposit, the Scripture says, as a guarantee we're born again, but you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's, it's talking about an immersion. It's talking about an overflowing. It's talking about something wonderful and, and powerful. And that's the word used there. You shall see power, dunamis, where we get dynamite from, the word dynamite. Uh, it's an explosive power. It's power for, for ministry. And as you said, change their lives. Peter, not long before, I mean, what was it? Pentecost is 50 days after the Passover. Jesus was seen of over 40 days. And he was Peter denying, I'll never deny you, Lord. He failed him miserably when the cock crew. He, he, totally. And yet on that day, somebody that uh, failed so much, that the Lord and Savior, uh, that he said, you know, I'll, I don't want to go. I'll never f deny you, Lord. Denied him. Yet on that day, this is a restoration. This is a gospel where somebody that had failed, yet just a short time later, was prepared to stand up in the front of the same people that said, you're one of them. And, and could have cost him his life, but was there bold to preach. This is not, these are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was promised in Joel. They, they're filled with, this is that. They're filled with the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. It's, it 
gives you the boldness to minister, boldness for ministry, boldness to present Jesus Christ, to be a witness and to witness. Uh, that's what the outpouring of the Spirit. Apart from personal development as a Christian and opening up a gateway to spiritual gifts, because they spoke in languages they never learned, uh, and they all heard them, and they all... And they all heard them speak in their own languages, and they were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and people from all over the world that were there. And this is a wonderful strategy that the Lord had. Why the day of Pentecost? Well, one of the, one of the reasons with the day of Pentecost is everybody who was, everyone who was a Jew was going to be there for that feast. What a great time to have an a, a evangelistic crusade, if you like, a, an outpouring of the Spirit, because it wasn't going to be done in a corner just with 120. There was thousands there that day. There was packed. And that's the day God chose to demonstrate his power upon feeble and, and weak believers that were in fear often of their lives, yet gave them the boldness and strength to be going and declare the goodness of God in that day. It's an incredible story. You go from Acts 2 to Acts 3, you, you know, the, the, the layman, Aye. Peter and John, Miracles. silver and gold <laughs> we don't have, but such as we have, we give you. They are then thrown in jail. Acts 4, they're released, and then they pray, God, give us the boldness. To come well, there, there's the wonderful thing about Acts 4. Is some people say, well, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit 40 years ago. And th that was it. You, you, and you say, what was it like? Oh, it was wonderful. I spoke in tongues. I felt the presence of God. Oh, that was a wonderful experience. And that was the, the last time that they ever had any kind of experience of the presence of God in such a way. That isn't what God desires. And even then, just a short time after, being baptized with tongues of fire, literally you could see on their heads, signs and wonders. And that day, 3,000 people came to Christ. Yet, short time after, they all came, because after the Peter and John got uh, beaten, they were all said, Lord, Lord, help us, deliver us, give us strength, give us power to preach, give us boldness to declare your goodness. It says, and the whole place was shaken, and uh -huh. they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. There you go. So there's one baptism, but there's many, many, many fillings. Many fillings. Yeah. And if the early disciples and apostles needed to be filled with the Spirit again, then how can we say that we don't? If they needed the power of the Holy Spirit every day of their life, then I say, oh, Lord, I need the same. Come and fill this vessel and, sh and fill us with the power that shakes us to the point of our change and go out and demonstrate your goodness. And, and I'll tell you what, David, I, I was just thinking the other day, I was reading again the, the fact, you know, the, the 120, and the Bible's very clear, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, mm. was in that room. Mm, and I was just thinking, wow, because, you know, she, she'd seen her son on the cross. Uh, Jesus has spoke, you know, to, they believe it was John, the disciple, you know, Here, here's your mother, uh, here's your son, uh, you know, taking care of her. And yet here she is, here's Mary. Yeah. On that day of Pentecost, in that room, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wonderful. In other words, her work was not over. God still had something. In, and maybe someone is listening today thinking, oh, I'm too old for that, or, or it's not necessary. But Mary helps us understand. And, and something else, you know, I believe that the Spirit of God moving in our life is for all peoples. Yes. I read that earlier from yeah. the Scripture. So, so it's not just a male thing. No. It, it's for all, because the Bible says, you know, on your sons, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, you know, dream dreams, you know, all that sort of thing, just going. It, it, it's so exciting, and what I discover is, is when you begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, you, you, you feel yeah, yourself. The witness. You know, yes, right. you know, yeah. I, I'm quite passionate anyway, yeah. but, but I just feel myself getting stirred. Well, it's, it's that fire, <laughs> because the, <laughs> what's it the scripture says, well, well, the, while I'm used, the fire burned. Yeah. And, and when you begin to think on these things, there is, there's a, there's a, the fire begins to, to burn up within you and sometimes it overflows in praise or worship or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that, that scripture is, is, is incredible, isn't it? No, no difference in male, female, or class distinction. Yeah. Slaves, born men, free, uh, age doesn't matter. Uh, young men, your old men, or dream dreams, young men, see visions. All these things, that God breaks through the same way he did with the woman of Samaria at the well. He broke through every class, every uh, bias, every, there's nothing, in the gospel, it's, it's everyone, it's for the whole body of Christ, continually, that the body of Christ, and if it's the body of Christ and the church of God is going to grow effectively, each member has to do that part, you know, the Bible says that in Ephesians, that, that doing that which each part of the, the body 
it gives what it's meant to be doing and so there's not a lack. Somebody is not having to do the work of something else. And that's why we need the, the moving of the Spirit today, definitely. Okay. Uh, and from misunderstanding, people go, oh, I'm scared of that. If you're born again, the Spirit of God dwells in you. There's nothing to fear, nothing to fear of God. He's a gentleman and the gifts of God are just a sign, a sign to the unbeliever even, it says tongues, is that God is still the same God today as he was yesterday. It's supernatural, same power. It dwells within us that raised Christ from the dead. So, so listen, time is gone. We, we could talk on it. I, I want you just to take a minute. You're speaking to this camera, and, and the Bible says suddenly. Yes. <laughs> and boy, we, come on, we've preached many, on that. Many suddenly. <laughs> suddenly. Come on, yeah. tell the folks that they can have a suddenly moment encounter yes, with amen. God. You know, the Bible talks about redigging wells. And I challenge you today, maybe you've been filled with the Spirit but it's been a long time ago, or a one-off experience, dig again that well. Clear out the, anything that might clutter the flow of God in your life. Just, just lay it on the altar and ask God to fill you again with His Holy Spirit. And the Scripture says that if you ask, you shall receive. How much more, one verse says, shall a Heavenly Father give good gifts to those that ask. And another Scripture, I think it's Luke, it says, give the Holy Spirit to those that ask. And God wants to fill your life right now with the power of his Holy Spirit. Just receive it. Just ask and believe and, and be filled again. The Bible says in Ephesians, be filled with the Spirit. And it means be being filled continuously. Every day, like the apostles, fill us again, Lord. Fill us again, Lord. And you'll be amazed as you come to God in that way, that the outpouring of his Holy Spirit, he'll renew things in you. It's like a dry ground getting rain. Things begin to grow. Your life begins to grow spiritually again. And you walk in what the Bible calls the fullness that God has for us. And each one of us need it. Each one of us get dry. D.L. Moody said, I'm filled with the Spirit, but I leak. And we all do. There's times we, we don't feel very spiritual. But come again into his presence. Call upon the Lord while he's near. And you'll find that he'll come and fill you again. Refreshing waters of life. Amen. Oh, thank you, David. Hey, we, we've known each other for many, many years since we were young, young men. Right. And you've never lost that passion, that enthusiasm, that drive. You still live in that place of expectancy. You know, you still are hunger and you thirst after the things of God. And I, I commend you for that, that fire you keep burning. And uh, thank you for being with us today. Well, it, it's, it's such a, a, a big topic you know to, to discuss and uh, I, I love wh when you've had the opportunity to come and share with us in, in the church and teach on the person of the Holy Spirit it's it's one where we get the highest attendance because people just love that so let me encourage you go for Thank God you. may his blessing yeah. be upon you in Jesus Thank name hey I hope you've enjoyed that hey you could tell we, we could chat on and on and on but I really want to encourage you on this Pentecost Sunday. Why don't you begin to ask God, pray to God, desire from God that he would help you, that he would put that hunger within you for the things of the Spirit of God. And there is so much more to learn, to understand, but I promise you, if it's from God, it is a good thing. He is the gift. Jesus says it's better for you, and I believe that. Hey, thanks for listening today. May God bless you.
prophesy and sing we can hear the wind blowing 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 move upon our praise sons and daughters sing we can hear the wind blowing 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 never coming to a prophesy and sing we can hear the wind blowing 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 move upon the place the sons of God are sweet we can hear the wind blowing blowing we need a fresh wind the fragrance of heaven pull your spirit out pull your spirit out our holy anointing the power of your presence pull your spirit out pull your spirit out we need a fresh wind we need a fresh wind the fragrance of heaven pull your spirit out pull your spirit out our holy anointing the power of your presence pull your spirit out pull your spirit out hey i hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as you could tell that I did. Holy Ghost, to breathe on us, I pray. Fresh wind. That's what we need, church. We need a suddenly moment in God. We need one of those encounters again with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I really want to challenge you. If you love Jesus, the Bible says stir up that gift that is within you. And we need to hunger and thirst for the things of God. Oh, how I need him. I need God more today than I've ever needed him. And my friend, Christian believer, I want to tell you, please push into the things of God. Don't be satisfied. Don't put a stake in the ground and say you've arrived. None of us have arrived. And I believe that the Holy Spirit really wants to do something fresh and something new in our heart. And I pray that there's a stirring as, as David and I were talking. Our prayer was that there was a stirring in your heart and in your spirit just to encounter God in a, in a new way, in, in, a, in a, a mercy's new everyday moment, a spirit of the living God. This day, would you move on my behalf? And I believe that there is an anointing of God for every one of us. I believe that God can equip us when we become spirit-led individuals into every season, in every area of life. Well, listen, maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've tuned in today, but you've never encountered him as your Lord and Savior. I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit, he, the Bible says he convicts us of our sin. He, he makes us aware, and perhaps even as you were listening to that conversation, the, your, your heart, your spirit, something within you was, was just beginning to, to flutter a little bit. That's the moving of the Spirit of God, because the Father God wants you to come into relationship with him, and notice how Father, Son, Holy Spirit all are involved in bringing you into that relationship. And you're watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. I would love to pray with you. And if that's you or maybe you know that your life is not right before God, would you today say, Neil, something needs to change, something needs to happen. And, and would you come into agreement as I pray right now and perhaps just in your home, you will play, pray alongside me Dear Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I thank you for the power of the gospel. That love was demonstrated when Jesus came to the cross. He died and he rose on that third day. So would you forgive me of my sins? Would you come into my heart? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, well done you. We would love to connect. We would love to be able to help you move forward in your Christian journey. 
So perhaps in the chat, you would just simply say, I said yes. What that means is that allows us to get in contact with you and some of the hosts will do that. And we can engage with you on your incredible journey of knowing more about him. Or if you have any questions around salvation, around church, or around what it means to be a Christian, why don't you put it in the chat and, and we'll get in touch. Well, I think everyone would agree we have had an incredible day and time together. This service has been unbelievable as we've recognized the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, could I remind you that after the service today, 2 o'clock, that registration opens up for in-person service. What a great time we've been having. If you haven't got along to our 9.30 or 11.30 service, let me encourage you. Why don't you purpose? Why don't you be intentional to do so? It is good being in the room. I thank God for digital platform. I thank God that we have the ability to connect like this. But I tell you, I'm going to be honest, folks. It's no substitute for being in the room. Then please remember to be in prayer for Apex Community Cafe on Wednesdays. What an incredible mission work right here on our doorstep. God is helping us to be a blessing to those in our local town. And perhaps you know some people are aware of some people that are, are challenged right now in, in certain area of finance or perhaps just struggling to put food on the table. Why don't you let them know that Apex Church can be a blessing to them. I pop in nearly every Wednesday to encourage, and hey, I'm blessed by the soup that I get. It, it is lovely. Apex Church, I want you to realize that the team are not letting us down. They are doing a stellar work. And then, of course, Apex Church family, Wednesday night, 8.30. What a time we are having together. Being able to just lean in as a community, to engage together. Hey, we have worship, we have prayer, we have great banter, don't we, Pastor Dan and myself at the beginning. And then we've had some just incredible guests, and I know that this Wednesday will be no different. So please purpose to join with us. And can I just say once again, thank you for your kindness, thank you for your generosity in your giving. Through our tithes and offerings, it has been able to sustain us and move forward all during the pandemic, and has allowed us to reach further than not only our local community, but to reach literally across the world. We have been able to bless different mission organizations. We have been able to partner along with other churches and other evangelists that have been struggling during this time. I guess what I'm saying to you is, you have helped us to be a blessing to others. And I firmly believe that when you bless, God always blesses you. So in your continued giving, whether you do that using the QR code that is coming up on screen, whether you still prefer to do that through the check into the office, however you do that, we just want to say we so appreciate. Listen, realize something. We never take for granted people's generosity. I know it's a value of this local church, but thank you again so much. Well, we're going to sing just as we sort of sign off. Can I encourage you? Please purpose to join with us during this week at Apex Church, the different things that are happening. I'm praying you have a blessed week. May the favor of God go before you. May you be aware of his presence. May you choose to be led by the Spirit. And may you be able to say, God is my helper. God bless you. See you soon. Prophesy and sing well, We can hear the wind Blowing, blowing, blowing 